Yeah, thanks so much. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers to give me the chance to share my work here. So basically, this is the work in the fields of enumerative combinatorics. And we would like to enumerate uh, dominant tilings of Arctic diamond under some symmetries. So uh, you can find my slides on my website and papers. Uh, this talk is based on these two papers. And this, uh, basically, we'll focus on the second paper, and which is just posted on archive today. OK, so first, uh, I would like to introduce uh, dominant tilings of Arctic diamond and uh, the symmetry classes of lane. And I will introduce a new symmetry class, which is called off-diagonal symmetry. And talk about results in two directions, possibly a conjectures. And if time permits, then I will talk about the method, how I prove uh, those results. Oh, so first, a tiling is a covering of a region on a plane using uh, given a set of tiles without gaps or overlaps. Uh, in this talk, we would like to look at the region, which is called the Arctic diamond. Uh, it's the union of all unit squares in the region bounded by this inequality. Uh, so on the uh, left picture is the Arctic diamond of order four. On the right picture is an example of dominant tilings. Basically, we cover this Arctic diamond region using dominoes, uh, which are one by two or two by one rectangles. And we cover it without gaps or overlaps. And one of the famous uh, classical results by L.K. Stars and Cooper and Prop uh, 20 years ago, or so 30 years ago, uh, is about the number of dominant tilings of Arctic diamond of order n is given by uh, 2 to the power of n times n minus 1 over 2. OK, now let's put some symmetries on it. So suppose you have a finite group G, a set of combinatorial object x. And suppose this group action Gx on x is well defined. And a symmetry class is a set of uh, h invariant objects of x, where h is a subgroup of G. And in particular, in this talk, we will take our objects to be dominant tilings of Arctic diamond. And the action, uh, the group G is a dihedral group of order 8. Uh, you should think of it as a reflection and rotation of a square. And it's an easy exercise to write down all the subgroups of dihedral group of, of order 8. And it turns out that this gives you uh, five non-trivial symmetry classes of dominant tilings of Arctic diamond. Also, there are a list here. So if we take the subgroup to be the trivial uh, group, and the corresponding symmetry class is just the original Arctic diamond, and we know the number of dominant tilings in this symmetry class. For the next two, it's about the rotational symmetry. So this is about the dominant tilings that are invariant under a 90 degrees rotation or uh, a 180 degrees rotation. So for these two, uh, they have been started by Yang and Chigu in the 1990s. They have the uh, uh, product formula counting those numbers of tidings. But for the last two, it's about reflective symmetry. So basically, that's a dominant tidings. Uh, it's symmetric with respect to the vertical diagonal and both vertical and horizontal diagonals of the Isaac diamond region. Can I just ask, yes. what is the diagonal of the diamond? Is it this way or is it this way? Uh, the vertical okay. one. The vertical <laughs> one, yes. Uh, we will look at a picture later, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so in these two cases, uh, we, ha we have only data so far. There's no uh, good method to come up with the closed form formula. So basically, finding a closed form formula for the last two symmetry classes is still open. And in this talk, I will focus on H4, which is diagonally symmetric, plus an extra condition. So are the numbers nice, round numbers? Oh, no, 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 both are not round. Yeah, so it's somehow it's very, I think it's very difficult to find a product formula. Yeah. OK, so let's, uh, let me tell you how to define a new symmetry class. So I think this is the most important definition uh, in this talk. Uh, so let's consider uh, the Arctic diamond region and with the checkable coloring on it. A cell is a two by two square with top right and bottom left unit squares colored black. Uh, now, given a dominant tilings on it, uh, we said a cell is assigned negative one, zero, or one if it contains zero, one, or two complete dominoes. So for example, if you look at this red one, it contains only one complete domino, so it will be assigned zero. If you look at this green one, 
it contains two complete dominoes, so it will be assigned positive one. Uh, this blue one, it contains no complete domino, so it will be assigned negative one. So basically, given a domino tidings on it, you can assign one of these three numbers, negative one, zero, or one, to each cell. Okay, so we say a domino tiling is off diagonally symmetric if uh, it is diagonally symmetric plus the extra condition, the cells along the vertical diagonal are all assigned zero. Uh, the second condition looks weird, but the motivation came from uh, off diagonally symmetric alternating sign matrices, meaning that the diagonal entries of the alternating sign matrices are zero, uh, which were uh, introduced by Kruberberg. So this is an example. So this is our diagram of order six. Uh, you can check that. I think the dominoes are symmetric with respect to the vertical diagonal. And there are six cells on the vertical diagonal uh, that are marked in the red dotted uh, box. And uh, you can check that in each cell, it contains exactly one complete domino. So they are all assigned zero. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so I know uh, there's a well-known bijection between domino tilings of, of object diamond of order n and n tuples of non-intersecting lattice pairs. But because of this uh, off-diagonal symmetry condition, so in the previous work, I mean in the first paper, uh, we show how this uh, off-diagonal symmetry condition corresponds to those non-intersecting lattice pairs. Uh, basically, the n ending point of those parts are in doublet. So each this blue circle is a doublet. It contains two uh, points. And these two points are both or neither the ending points of the path. So either, well, it must be the ending points of two paths or neither. So that's a condition, which means that we need to have even number of lattice paths so that those of diagonal symmetry uh, domino tilings exist. This means that n must be even. So the case when n is even uh, has been studied in the first paper. Uh, in today's talk, I will present the result when n is odd. So that's main, the main result in the second paper. Is this the same as uh, two enumeration of after? Uh, right, 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 right. Yes. Okay, our first third is if we just consider the odd order as a diamond, basically it corresponds to odd number of lattice paths, but we, we cannot have such off diagonal symmetry from domino tidings. So one way to do that is to remove one unit squares from the boundary, uh, let's say, uh, from the southwestern boundary, so let's say uh, this one. But because of symmetry, we have to remove the corresponding unit square on the other side. So, okay, so basically removing this unit square, uh, if you just look at that bijection, it means that we just delete one lattice pass. So now you have even number of lattice pass. And let O and K denotes those off diagonal symmetric domino tilings. Uh, with one boundary defect, means that we remove the K's unit squares. As, uh, the position is counted from bottom. So this will be the fourth, and this one will be the second unit squares. Okay, so the first result is that if we remove the, remove the unit squares at the position k and position 2m minus k, they have the same number of, of diagonally symmetric domino tilings. So let's go back to here. So this, this is indeed the case. So we remove the second one and fourth one, they have the same uh, domino tilings. If we remove the first one uh, here and remove the fifth one, they also have the same number of domino tidings. Okay, uh, because of time constraints, so I would like to just briefly point it out that uh, recently, Baron, Fisher, and Kuchen conjecture a similar symmetry property for off diagonal symmetry alternating sign matrices. Uh, but basically, our result is the special case of their conjecture. If, if you know it, it's the two enumeration of their conjecture. And our, res our, our proof is now Straightforward is a bit uh, technical, so an open problem is to find a direct bijection between the tidings of these two sets. Okay, so that's about the first uh, direction. 
The second direction is that instead of removing the unit squares from the boundary, uh, let's consider the Isaac diamond of order 2n minus 1. So basically, you can think of there are 2n minus 1 passes. Among them, uh, 2n minus 2 cells on the diagonal are assigned 0, while the remaining 1 cell uh, could be either assigned negative 1 or positive 1. So that's our second direction, which is called nearly off diagonal. So all the diagonal cells are not zero, except one is not zero. OK, uh, so uh, according to the position of these non-zero cells and the value assigned on it, we have several cases. So I use a notation d plus uh, 2 minus 1 k. It means that, OK, the non-zero cell is at the position k, counted from bottom. And plus means that that cell is assigned past one. And similarly, we have d minus means that cell is assigned negative one. And there's a situation that with plus minus means that that cell could be either uh, negative one or positive one. So basically, it's a union of the previous two sets. And if we consider all possible position of non-zero cells, means k uh, it runs from one to two minus one. If you take a union of them, that gives you uh, something called a nearly orthogonal symmetry. So our second result is basically uh, gives a Fafian formula for uh, linearly off-diagonal symmetry domino tilings. OK, before stating the uh, formula, I have to define a matrix, skew symmetry matrix A. Uh, since it's skew symmetry matrix, so let's just focus on the upper triangular part. The first row is 2, oh, except for the 1-1 one, one entry. Uh, the IJ entry is Defined recursively is a sum of three terms. So I say uh, 26 is 6 plus 10 plus 10, uh, 50 is 10 plus 14 plus 26, and so on. And the third identity uh, says that if that entry is just one unit above the diagonal, uh, then it's the sum of two terms plus or minus a constant. Say uh, 10 equals 2 plus 6 plus 2, uh, 34 is 10 plus 26 minus 2. So we can define the entry of this matrix recursively uh, in this way. And then we also need to uh, define a sequence Fn. Uh, Fn is equal to uh, 2 times Fn minus 1 plus Fn minus 2 with the initial value 2 and 4. Uh, basically, this is twice the pale numbers. OK, so the second result is that the number of nearly of diagonal symmetry domino tilings is given by the far end of this matrix or where a 2 and minus 1, uh, you just take the first 2 and minus 1 rows and columns of the matrix A. And f uh, is the column vector. You take the first 2 and minus 1 terms of the sequence f and you just put them together. So this is an example for uh, when n equals 3, so that's the Isaac diamond of order 5. So this 5 by 5 sub matrix, it comes from A, and the last Color and last row comes from the twice the pale numbers, the first five terms. And if you compute the far end, that gives you the number of tidings. Okay, so so far two directions we do gone. One is uh, about uh, you, you remove one uh, unit squares from the boundary, and the other one is uh, on the vertical diagonal, there's one cell uh, which is not assigned zero. For those two cases, uh, there are no closed form formula. So basically, we have only far thin expression of lane. But however, these numbers satisfy some matrix equation. So let me first define a column vector for lane. So O, uh, capital O, will be uh, the vector, and each component is a number of tidings. Uh, o, o stands for the um, if you just remove the one unit squares from the boundary at position k, and then k runs from 1 to 2 and minus 1. And capital D star will be those nearly of diagonal symmetry. Um, uh, the non zero entry is at the position k, where k runs from 1 to 2 and minus 1. And those uh, star represents plus minus or plus minus. So we have the matrix equation like this. You have the matrix N multiplied by a vector O equals to the vector D. And where the entry of this matrix, uh, matrix N is basically the side 
did not know in numbers. Uh, in other words, uh, you can think of it, the number of, let's say, D can be written, uh, can be expressed in terms of the linear combination of the domino tidings with uh, one boundary defect and vice versa, uh, under the assumption that the matrix M star is inversible. Okay, so that's how we connect those um, numbers where well, those numbers have no closed form formula. Okay, finally, let's talk about conjectures. So we saw at the beginning, we know the number of domino tidings of object diamond without any restriction is given by this power of two. Uh, if you take a limit, let n goes to infinity and raise that number to the power of one over n squared uh, is square root of two. So I conjecture that uh, we have the similar asymptotic behavior for diagonal symmetric, which is the H4 case. Uh, for of diagonal symmetry of even older Isaac diamond and nearly of diagonal symmetric domino tidings of odd older Isaac diamond and raised to the certain power or you still get a square root of two. Okay, another conjecture is about uh, log concavity. So now give a positive integer n, we look at the sequence all all means that you have uh, one boundary defects. The position, uh, the, uh, the boundary defect is at position k, and let k goes to runs from one to two and minus one. And this sequence is, uh, my data shows that is low concave and hence a uh, unimodal. Yeah, I think I have no uh, good way to uh, do uh, to prove the low concavity. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, I have time. So let's talk about the method. The uh, idea behind it is basically under the bijection between tilings and non intersecting uh, the Lanoi paths. But because of this off diagonal symmetry conditions and the sales on the diagonal uh, has three possible assignments. It's either negative one, zero, or one. So we have to put those special conditions into um, those non intersecting lattice paths. And basically, we just turn the tidy enumeration problem into lattice pass enumeration problem. And how to enumerate those paths uh, is the second one. Stanbridge is far from formula, but our main contribution is to, uh, to do some modification so that, that works for our uh, this spatial condition. Okay, that's basically the very rough idea behind it. Okay, so these are the references and thank you so much. Yeah.